candy, candy canes, candy corns, and syrup. The Christmas season is a time for celebrations, family, and of course, food. Most of us have tasty Christmas treats we associate with the holiday, foods that help make the good times complete. Eggnog and fruitcake are seasonal classics that have almost become cliches. Maybe frosted sugar cookies are more your style. And what would Christmas be without candy canes? For many people, Christmas dinner wouldn't be complete without a roasted turkey or succulent ham. But maybe you enjoy Kung Pao chicken and fried rice. In any case, these are the top 10 tastiest Christmas treats. Who are the Christmas cookies, Ma? That's chocolate gold. This is Aztec gold. Giving kids chocolate foiled wrapped coins for Christmas is a long standing Christmas tradition in Europe. These coins have become particularly popular in the United Kingdom, Canada, and the United States, where they are often included in Christmas celebrations as stocking stuffers. The chocolate candy coins are also part of Jewish holiday celebrations, such as Hanukkah. Some in the Jewish community claim the giving of foil wrapped chocolates is a very old practice within their religion that predates the Christian practice. However, credit for these foil wrapped chocolates is commonly given to St. Nicholas, a bishop up in Lycia, which is part of modern-day Turkey. According to the story, St. Nicholas threw a handful of real coins down a chimney. The coins ended up falling into a young girl's stockings that had been hung by the fireplace to dry. The positive reaction from children was so great that the bishop decided to continue the practice with the chocolate versions. Regardless of who actually started this wonderful holiday tradition, we can agree that these chocolate foil wrapped coins will continue to be a tasty Christmas treat. Do you eat these yummy tin wrapped chocolate coins? Our video videos are also a pretty great treat. So if you're new here, click that subscribe button and ring that bell to join our notification squad. Don't make me big. Nutty as a fruitcake. A fruitcake? You probably know fruitcake is a traditional Christmas cake made with candied or sometimes dried fruits. Assorted nuts, spices, sugar, and flour are all common ingredients as well. Some fruitcake recipes call for the cake to be soaked in spirits, such as rum. There are fruitcake recipes that have survived from the time of the Roman Empire. These recipes called for ingredients such as pomegranate seeds and raisins mixed into a barley mixture. You probably think you don't like fruitcake, or at least you've heard it isn't any good. It's something that your grandmother tried to get you to eat. Fruitcake has gotten a bad reputation lately as though it is a stogy anachronism from a bygone era. Maybe it is, but if you like cake generally, you just haven't found the right fruitcake because there are many tasty varieties to choose from. Recipes dating from the Middle Ages usually featured honey or molasses because sugar was hard to come by for most people. What sugar they could get was often used to preserve the fruits for the cake. For much of history, fruitcakes were considered a luxury item enjoyed by the wealthy, but in the 1500s, sugar became more available and so less expensive in Europe. Fruitcakes became more affordable and were enjoyed by large segments of Europe. Fruitcakes are a Christmas treat enjoyed in many places around the world, and each region has its own variations and specialties. That's our speciality. <laughs> Merry Christmas cheese balls. What if a cheese balls? The history of cheese balls starts with Thomas Jefferson. John Leland of Cheshire, Massachusetts, created a giant cheese ball that weighed in at a whopping 1,200 pounds. The giant ball of cheese became known as the Mammoth Cheese and Mr. Leland had to transport it by barge and wagon to Washington, D.C. He presented the cheesy gift to President Jefferson on New Year's Day, 1801. Cheese balls were a popular staple at Christmas parties 40 to 50 years ago, but those times were a little more traditional than today. Perhaps hosts have moved on to what they consider more sophisticated party foods, but the staples should never go out of style. You'd think cheese spread on some Ritz or Club crackers would always be a winner. Fortunately, it seems that cheese balls have been making something of a comeback with people posting their own unique cheese ball recipes on social media. The traditional cheese ball covered with nuts is a perfectly acceptable and tasty Christmas treat. However, there are a lot of examples of much more inventive and elaborate shapes, such as a pine cone design that has you cover the molded cheese cheese shape with whole almonds. So creative. A good candy caning. Candy cane girls! Okay, hurry up. Candy canes are one of the few Christmas treats that are as much a food as they are an ornament. Is a Christmas tree really complete without red and white striped peppermint flavored candies hanging from an evergreen's lush branches? The exact origins of this traditional holiday favorite are not completely clear, but there is an interesting tale from 17th century Germany. A Cologne choir master at the local church needed a way to occupy the rambunctious children in his charge who had a habit of disrupting services. The choir master employed a candy maker to create some sugar sticks to placate the unruly children. To give the 
Candy a religious justification he could sell to his parishioners, he asked the candy maker to put a bend in the sticks to make them look like shepherd's crooks. These would have religious significance for them because crooks were used by many of the ancients who gathered to see the baby Jesus in Bethlehem. Some people doubt the truth of this account, but there is no doubt that it is a good Christmas story worth telling. The first written reference to a candy cane appeared in 1866, but no specific description was included. Starting around 1882, people began hanging candy canes on their Christmas trees, and the rest is history. Uh, is that a candy cane, Milhouse? Smooth as velvet cake. Seriously, it's like velvet. The red velvet cake is believed to have emerged during the Victorian era, 1837 to 1901, in Great Britain. From the beginning, this dramatic cake was considered an elegant dessert and soon became associated with Christmas celebrations. Traditionally, the reddish color of the cake was produced by using certain kinds of cocoa. Beetroot was also included in many recipes to provide a deeper and more reliable red color, but most modern recipes use red food coloring. The frosting is usually made from either a white cream cheese recipe or an herb Mine, which is a kind of boiled milk mixture. Both of these frosting recipes are very sweet, but complement the cocoa-flavored cake well. The cake's popularity quickly spread to America and Canada, where it was often featured prominently in elegant department store and hotel restaurants in the first half of the 20th century. The Waldorf Astoria Hotel became particularly associated with the elegant dessert, and even started calling its version of the red velvet dessert Waldorf Astoria Cake. The striking red cake and white frosty make this cake a natural choice for a tasty Christmas treat. But as cake lovers know, this delicious dessert is perfect for any occasion. Red velvet. <laughs> the proof is in the Christmas pudding. The who who pudding, pudding cooked this treat may not look like much to many of us, but Christmas pudding is still one of the top holiday desserts in Great Britain. The dessert is not popular in America. Maybe the word pudding throws people off because they envision a creamy texture. Classic Christmas pudding, however, is not a pudding in the American sense of the word. Although it is steamed, not baked, the result is closer to a traditional fruitcake. Many pudding recipes in Britain dating back to the Middle Ages included sausages and other meats. The word pudding is believed to be derived from a French word that means small sausage. Many recipes in the Middle Ages used sausages for a savory treat or a combination of savory and sweet. Modern Christmas pudding recipes usually hold the meat and concentrate on the dried fruits, sugars, and spices. These ingredients are held together by eggs and suet, a hard animal fat, that gives the sweet pudding its rich texture. The pudding batter usually includes alcohol, such as brandy. The finished pudding is then aged for up to a year to improve the aroma and flavor. King George I, who ruled from 1714 to 1727, is said to have requested the delicacy at his first royal Christmas dinner as king. Ever since the king gave the tasty treat his stamp of approval, British families have made the pudding an important Christmas tradition. It's traditional. A good eggnog. The best way to get the Christmas spirit is to drink a whole lot of thick, frothy eggnog. We can thank the British for the creamy drink known as eggnog. However, some people believe the name is actually an Americanism from the middle of the 18th century. Most eggnog experts believe the drink originated in the Middle Ages from a traditional hot milk drink called posette. The milk was curdled with wine or ale and spiced with cinnamon or nutmeg. This festive drink has also been known as milk punch and egg milk punch. Eggnog is a heavy drink made from milk, cream, sugar, raw egg yolks, and egg whites. The use of raw eggs in the recipe is often cited as a reason for the decline in popularity of homemade eggnog because people are concerned about inflicting party guests with salmonella poisoning. The processing of commercial eggnog avoids this problem. Most store-bought eggnog contains very little egg anyway. Assorted spirits are often added to the creamy drink. Popular choices include rum, whiskey, and brandy. A large punch bowl containing frothy eggnog used to be a common sight at Christmas parties, and even though its popularity has declined somewhat, it's still a tasty Christmas treat, and it deserves a second look. Eggnog? Now we are talking. This man's got the apron and the eggnog, huh? <laughs> <laughs> a Friendly's Jubilee. 
The Friendly's restaurant chain has long been known in New England and other parts of the East Coast for their tasty ice cream creations, such as the formidable Reese's Pieces Sunday and classic Fribble Shakes. The Massachusetts-based chain went through some tough times, but has worked past the issues and has about 400 locations. Some people might not associate the winter holiday season with ice cream, but New Englanders love their ice cream, even when the calendar says winter. This cool, festive dessert is sure to warm even the most skeptical sweet tooth. A chocolate ice cream center surrounded by chocolate chip ice cream, topped with fudge, chopped almonds, red and green candy chips, and what Friendly's refers to as an ice cream ribbon. It may not be a traditional Christmas treat for many, but if you have the chance to try it, it comes highly recommended. It's delicious, you gotta try it. Christmas is cookies. So which Christmas cookie would you like? Santa. <gasps> Perhaps no single food says Christmas more to people than those colorfully decorated cookies we all love to see coming out of the oven. Sugar cookies, butter cookies, gingerbread cookies are just the most recognized, but there are plenty of varieties that will appeal to all tastes. For a lot of us, frosted cookies shaped like trees, bells, snowmen, and Santa Claus are an important part of what makes Christmas, Christmas. This tradition isn't a new thing, however. It goes all the way back to medieval Europe's winter solstice festivals. Feast Christine was a central element of these festivals, and a growing availability of luxury ingredients like cinnamon and sugar stirred a renaissance of sorts in baking. Of course, various cakes and pies were enjoyed at these festivals, but cookies were more easily shared, which made them popular items for the feasts. It is believed that Queen Elizabeth I of England, who ruled from 1558 to 1603, was one of the first to eat a beloved Christmas staple, the gingerbread man. She is said to have told the royal baker to form the holiday cookies to resemble members of her court. Many children have precious memories of helping to decorate fresh baked cookies with colored frostings and sprinkles to turn them into tasty Christmas treats. Now let's get you some Christmas cookies. Incredible Edible Gingerbread House. Let's go to the gingerbread house. I can't look at a gingerbread house without thinking about the Hansel and Gretel story. An image of the evil witch's house made of gingerbread and candy to lure unsuspecting children to their doom has lingered in my memory. Gingerbread houses are a tasty and fanciful Christmas treat, and we have a 10th century Armenian monk to thank for them. The monk traveled from Greece to France and is said to have taught the local Christians to bake gingerbread with ginger, cinnamon, and nutmeg. From France, gingerbread baking spread to other parts of Europe. Germans loved gingerbread gingerbread in its different forms, and 16th century German bakers were inspired by the Grimm's fairy tale to bake tiny structures out of gingerbread and decorate them with icings and dried fruits and nuts. It was the English, however, who turned the tasty treats into an essential Christmas tradition. Ambitious families can make a gingerbread house with all the trimmings from scratch if they choose, but there are plenty of kits available that make the process a lot easier. Americans have been baking various kinds of gingerbread recipes for about two centuries and George Washington's mother made one of the most popular gingerbread recipes. Part decoration and part tasty Christmas treat, gingerbread houses are a delicious piece of holiday nostalgia. Mm. Hey, hey, that's not for eating. Well, it's too small for living in, isn't it? Celebrate your holiday season with us. Spread the cheer by clicking on another one of our great videos. And if you want to become an official Babble Topper, click on the join link in the description below for more details.